this reading of <clears throat> excuse me how to defeat a conservative is from censored number 131 and this how to defeat a conservative is part number nine by William J. Eisenman PhD many of today's conservatives are after agreeing with Ayn Rand's selfishness as a virtue part company with her when she demands that mysticism and supernatural sources of knowledge be rejected. Today's counterfeit Christian conservative cannot do this because he claims his values and his convictions come from God. Free market conservatives would have us believe that happiness is a result of success and that suffering is a sign of failure. They believe we are responsible for our fate. They also believe that we should not desire that which is unearned and that our only rational ethical principle should be trade. We should also only be paid for our achievements. The conservative belief is that only a rationally selfish person, a person with self-esteem, could be capable of love. To love is to value. However, this principle makes a mockery of altruism. Michael Lynn claims that today's conservative movement uses imitation populist rhetoric in the service of the rich and the business elite. Conservatives would have us believe that we in America are a massively upwardly mobile society and they contradict the Bible when they don't at times attribute success to destiny, fate, timing, milu, luck, and opportunity. Conservatives believe we are the only country in the world where our poor are fat. Conservatives constantly preach to the poor that they too can get rich if they just work hard. The onus of success or failure is always placed on the individual. Like Ayn Rand, the modern conservative believes that a society based excuse me while the the blower comes on with the furnace we're having a little uh, damp day here today repeating like Ayn Rand the modern conservative believes that a society based on altruism is bad Conservatives claim that the moral purpose of government is to protect citizens' rights. But what they protect are the rights of big business, lobbyists, the wealthy, and high-ranking government officials. They trample on the little guy's rights daily. No matter how much lip service conservatives pay to individualism, they are not talking about the little guy. To those in power, the individual is a commodity with few rights. True conservatives believe that altruists are sacrificial individuals who are anti-life. Conservatives claim the altruist lacks self-esteem. This resembles somewhat the conservatives' attitude toward the poor. They lack morality, self-esteem, and a work ethic. The conservative claim is that if the poor would just pull themselves up by their bootstraps and work hard, they would succeed. 
conservatives claim the up by the bootstraps philosophy comes from the Bible, which is not true. All through the Bible, God wants humans to rely on him. The modern counterfeit Christian conservative says we lack faith, but he does not share Ayn Rand's definition of faith the equating feelings with knowledge. In fact, the modern conservative denies that he uses feelings as a decision-making tool. He claims that this is what liberals do. But if conservatives rely on faith as knowledge, and they do, then they are relying on feelings. Reason has been rejected as a standard of judgment. When we rely on beliefs that are devoid of sense, evidence, or rational proof, we are relying on faith. Modern conservative political and economic philosophy are based on metaphysics. Faith has become a shortcut to real knowledge. Today's conservative won't be bound by reality. This is why he can say love is an expression and assertion of self-esteem and a response to one's own values in the lover. One's concern for the welfare of those one loves becomes a rational part of one's self-interest. One should, only under emergency conditions, volunteer to help strangers if it is within one's power. With such talk, is it any wonder why conservatives in government are accused of wanting to starve and kill children? This philosophy of love so devoid of feelings allows conservatives to neglect the poor and favor the rich. The modern conservative credo is, the moral purpose of life is the achievement of one's own happiness. If George Washington and his army at Valley Forge had felt this way, there would be no United States of America. At times, conservatives hold convictions out of context. They preach the letter of the law and neglect the spirit of the law. During Bill Clinton's impeachment hearings, the conservative party line was, the rule of law must prevail, when in fact, it was a mere vendetta. Modern day conservatives preach that government is one of the biggest threats to our lives. But big business can do no wrong. They believe that business can treat its workers like commodities and disposable cogs in the great wheel of industry. They believe we should all bow down and worship the mighty corporations. To conservatives, Capitalism and the free market are their new age religion. To gain or hold onto power, some selfish conservatives make promises they cannot or do not intend to keep. Some political conservatives promise balanced budgets, tax cuts, prayer in school and an end to legal abortion. But these economic and social goals, even among conservatives, represent different constituencies. 
social conservatives are represented by the religious right, who have little respect for the letter or the spirit of the law. They are intolerant. They want their agenda adopted no matter what. No compromise. Economic or fiscal conservatives have not yet worked out a successful plan to hide their naked greed when expounding balanced budgets and tax cuts. What is clear is that they favor the rich, the so-called producers of wealth, over the so-called non-producers of wealth. If selfishness is a virtue, then humans have not evolved at all. Every king, pharaoh, potentate, from the beginning of time has practiced selfishness as a virtue. It's a traditional family value. Nathaniel Brandon wrote that our emotional mechanism works according to the kind of values we choose. If we choose selfishness as a virtue, how does this help us in our quest for a civil society or to be part of a community? Selfishness as a virtue pits individuals against each other for the commodities of the world and might makes right prevails. Ayn Rand's philosophy was that Morality deals with issues open to our choice. Rights are a moral concept, and individual rights are the means of subordinating society to moral law. Groups have no rights. Only individuals have rights. And the purpose of government is to protect individual rights. However, if Ayn Rand is correct, then only powerful and well-connected would be protected. Selfishness as a virtue is pure propaganda that was de developed to justify greed. The rich, powerful, well-connected needed a means to put a positive spin on their naked greed and selfishness as a virtue was born. The rich have managed to focus the average person's envy and criticism of the rich on to government. Conservative propaganda has managed to turn the attack on selfishness into an attack on self-esteem and lack of success. Liberals have been unsuccessful in counteracting this propaganda. Facts have not worked. Facts cannot even counter faith and the mysticism of religion. Liberals have failed to deprive the conservative of the moral high ground. Today's counterfeit Christian conservative rants that all morals come from God and all who haven't found Jesus are lost. The counterfeit right-wing Christian conservative believes he occupies the moral high ground. Liberals have thus far not been able to shut down this propaganda, even though the truth, even the truth, excuse me, unless it has mass support, has difficulty countering this propaganda. What we must understand is that the conservative is defeated when he is deprived of this moral high ground. This is not trivial. It is important. At the base of all their talk of reform, populism, 
revolution for the religious conservative is the moral high ground. For any meaningful change to occur, the progressive must attack, undermine, and destroy this moral high ground. Progressives must temper their natural bent toward tolerance in order to do this. Conservatives must be prevented from writing laws that are based on the dogma of a non-existent or unprovable gods. Rational humans must base their lives on reality, not on faith. We must prove all things. Prohibition and racist Jim Crow laws were based on faith. They were wrong. It's the same with censorship laws. They are always wrong. We are all born selfish, self-centered, and in need. Normally, we evolve and learn to take care of ourselves, need, and love others. This capacity to love and care for others is a natural result of instinctual gratification and the hormone oxytocin, which it seems conservatives are short of. If we grow up emotionally unblocked, we can give ourselves to others freely and our love is unselfish. This is the normal pattern of personality growth. But if we grow up with emotional blocks, we believe in such philosophies as selfishness, as a virtue. Selfishness is an infantile emotion, not a virtue. Drug dealers are selfish. Bank robbers are selfish. Muggers are selfish. The Bible portrays Satan as selfish. Selfishness as a virtue has incrementally been written into our laws covering the social safety net and tax cut legislation. Selfishness as a virtue has never worked in the past. It cannot work in a communal setting like marriage, family, among workers in society or a nation. Selfishness as a virtue has never worked in the past. It cannot work in communal settings, as I said, like marriage, family, among workers, in society or a nation. It is a divisive philosophy. It's definitely wrong-headed and anti-American. In history, the Stamp Act was selfish, and Americans protested it. The British plundering of colonial America was a selfish act, and Americans went to war with the British to stop it. In many ways, America was built on an anti-selfish sentiment. Valley Forge was a very unselfish act. There used to be a lot of anti-rich sentiment in America. But due to a successful propaganda campaign coming out of the 1970s, greed and selfishness have become virtues and accepted business practices. To distract us from their real goals, conservatives have focused on pornography as the way to save us all and return morality to the country. There are many forms of censorship. Advertisers censor by dictating editorial content and policy. The American government keeps secrets from the American public. The Food and Drug Administration lies and uses propaganda in its obscene war against vitamins, minerals, and herbs. and it uses SWAT team tactics against complementary medicine practitioners. Also state, city, federal government, and right-wing leaning Supreme Court judges cannot explicit, 
cannot censor, excuse me, explicit, obscene sexual material. They do censor it, excuse me. Some of us are offended by pornography, while others believe that looking at dirty pictures makes us violent. Others are like the deluded Judge Robert Bork, the late, who believe that only political speech is protected by the First Amendment to the Constitution. Many of us wrongly use the terms pornography and obscenity interchangeably. Legally, they are not the same. When all is said and done, all our objections to pornography and obscenity are our personal opinions, personal value judgments. And in most cases, these spring from religious soil. The end. Hi, this is William H. Morrow. The best way to join our organization is to get your free annual subscription to Newsletter Censored with your gift to support this work. The newsletter of hard-hitting truth and news-fighting censorship and conservative propaganda since 1977. There is nothing out there like the newsletter censored in the mainstream media or the press. This newsletter is the very best way to join and be a part of our organization. We're living the end times. So you need Newsletter Censored. Go to www.newslettercensored.com.